Please stand. We remember the name spoken over us at our baptism as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have three Bible readings this morning. Our first one you find in your Bible in the pew there, page 648. Page 648. Each of our Bible readings today emphasizes the spiritual food that God would feed our hearts with. First, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here. She says to those who lack judgment, come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live, walk in the way of understanding. This is God's word. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for today is a few verses from Psalm 18. You find it in the blue paperback songbook in your pew, page 143. second reading is in the Bible there in your pew, page 1163. We're in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, and we'll read verses 1 through 5, and then verses 11 through 13. This will also serve for our sermon today. For I do not want you 
to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. This is God's word. Amen. Please stand and join me in the Alleluia's, page six of the bulletin. Come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. Gospel this morning is on page 1077 in the Pew Bible. We continue in Jesus' sermon on the bread of life from John chapter 6. We start at verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But, as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. At this the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. 
It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you haven't yet, could everybody grab that little blue friendship register? It's a little blue binder uh, in your pew toward the center aisle. If you could grab that, fill that out. I'd love to see all you here today. And we'd love to have a record of your being here. Just grab that and fill that out at some point. Everybody, our, our members and our visitors. While you're doing that, I'll just point out in your bulletin, you have a little insert. On the one side is the outline you can use if you like to help you follow along with the message today. On the other side is a tear-off portion uh, to hand in your prayer requests. We'll talk about those a little more after the message. At this time, we'll continue with the hymn of the day. It's uh, in the blue hardcover hymnal, page 563. Dear Garden Homes family, 
it can seem like everything's changing. And I don't just mean the new foods people dream up, like uh, cotton candy burritos or a jalapeno chocolate chip cookie dough on a stick. And I don't just mean the things like the new world record holder, woman with the widest tongue. I mean bigger things. Things that change and you can hardly wrap your mind around them, like Pat Sajak retiring. Or Moana has a kid sister now. Or the things they're doing with computers to make you smarter and smarter. Apparently, a team of Dutch scientists have taught artificial intelligence to detect human sarcasm. They trained it on old episodes of Friends and, uh, and uh, what the, the, the Big Bang Theory. This is really important because eventually you might have a phone that can understand you when you say things like, Life is good. Maybe you should get one. <laughs> or uh, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. Everything's changing. You read the headline, it says the, the, the earth is spinning faster. And then a few months later, you read another headline, it says the earth is spinning slower. Everything's changing. More seriously, huh? Our politics seems like it's changing. Our morals seem like they're changing. Our weather seems to be changing. Our city changing? Would we say most of these things are changing for the better? Or for the worse? And then you talk about change when it comes into your own life, huh? And all of a sudden, <laughs> things aren't what they used to be for you. Your car dies. Or a relationship fails. Or somebody that you care about wrestling with depression or some other mental health struggle. Or somebody that, uh, that you could always count on. Now, all of a sudden, they're counting on you. Everything's changing, it seems like. In the ground underneath your feet. And maybe you, you just don't know where you stand anymore or how long you can stand. But our, our verses from 1 Corinthians 10, they talk about some things that don't ever change. Two things that don't ever change. One of them isn't so good. It's temptation. The other one is wonderful. God's faithfulness. Temptation is something that, that doesn't change. Our verses say, huh? if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. If you think you're standing firm, right? no matter how strong you think your faith is, no matter how close you, you, you feel like you are to God, no matter how resolved you are in your heart that you're not going to live for yourself. No, you're going to live for your neighbor. You think you're standing firm. Huh? You think you're steady in your relationship to your Creator. <laughs> Be careful. Humpty Dumpty. That seat on the wall isn't as safe as you thought. Be careful that you don't fall. And that things that could make you fall, it's nothing special just for you. Our verses say, no temptation has seized you except what is 
common to man, common to man. Don't think that the devil has to go in the kitchen, dig up some recipe he never tried before just to cook something special up for you because somehow you are so holy, you have developed an immunity to all his old temptations, right? You need some bespoke, custom-made temptation for someone like you. No, no, the devil, he can use the same old thing. He's used to make a million sinners fall before. Because your heart isn't all that different from theirs. This is something that doesn't change. From person to person or from age to age, temptation. Like what? Like what old temptations might the devil use? Like distracting you from God? Distracting you from eternal things? Getting you to focus on your problems instead of your blessings. Getting you to focus on what you don't have instead of all the wonderful things you do have. Getting you to look at your spouse or your loved ones or your coworkers and see everything that's wrong with them instead of seeing the way that they're a blessing to you. Getting you to live in doubt instead of trust and in fear instead of faith. Selfishness. Instead of humble service, it's the same old thing. The devil's been getting people to fall for, for a thousand years. And if you can't tell, he's been working on you. He's probably already got you. Seems like everything's changing, but there's one thing that doesn't, and that's temptation. And, and the other thing is that God is faithful. Mm, God is faithful. Let the world change however it wants. God is faithful. Let the world lie to you. Let the world break its promises or make excuses or leave you in the lurch. God is faithful. He has tried and true. His words are flawless. He will never let you down. God is faithful. That's one of the best things about him, isn't it? That he doesn't change. He's unfailing. Remember what Balaam said in Numbers chapter 24. God is not a man that he should lie or change his mind. Does he say something and not do it? Does he promise and not fulfill? You remember what Jeremiah said? Lamentations chapter 3. His compassions never fail. They are new ever morning. Great is your faithfulness. Well, God himself said, Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. And that's why you are not destroyed. So, thank you, God. God is faithful, and not just in general, but specifically when it comes to our temptations. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will give you a way out so that you can stand up under it. Beautiful words. So much there to talk about how God answers prayers like, lead us not into temptation. How does he answer a prayer like that? Or well, you see it three different ways just in this verse, don't you? He, he answers it with limits and exits and under it. <laughs> Sometimes he says, ooh, that temptation, that would be too big for you. I'm not even letting that into your life. He sets limits on the temptation. So he will not let you be tempted beyond what? Beyond what you can bear. He never will. He never will. He sets limits on your temptation. And then other times he says, well, I've got to let this temptation into your life, but I will always give you an exit. He will give you a way out. When you are tempted, he will give you a way out. No matter how trapped you feel by your sin, no matter how surrounded you feel by temptation, even if you know you are addicted and you'll never stop being addicted to this particular sin, God says, I have a way out for you. You might need to go get help from somebody around you, your fellow Christians, but I have a way out. Always. Limits and exits and under it. Yeah, sometimes in his wisdom, God says, I can't let you out of that temptation just quite yet. But I will give you the strength to stand under it. I'll give you the grit. I'll give you the fortitude. I'll give you whatever you need to stand under it. It can seem like everything's changing all around us, even the ground underneath our feet. But two things that don't change, one of them should always be careful of, and that is temptation. And the other one that we should always be turning to, and that is our faithful God. God is faithful. (laughs) 
And, and maybe we shouldn't be surprised in the same chapter, a few verses earlier, talking about God's faithfulness, these beautiful words about God's faithfulness, we get a picture of God's faithfulness that comes throughout the scriptures again and again, and that is God as our, our rock. Because if it was just about you being careful enough not to fall into sin, oh man, I don't think you'd make it. <laughs> but it isn't just about you being very careful, it's about you having the very best rock. Better than the Rock of Gibraltar, better than Dwayne the Rock Johnson, better than Rocky and Bullwinkle, right? It's the very best rock, the tried and true, the precious and chosen cornerstone, our Savior, Jesus. The rock, huh? if anybody can keep you from falling, it's him. That rock was Christ, our verses say. That rock was Christ. If anybody can hold you up, when the ground is moving beneath your feet, it's Jesus. That rock. Was Christ, and, and if we look at those verses, we're not going to pull everything out. There's so much there. But just look at those verses, the different ways that our verses describe our Savior Jesus as a rock. It's wonderful. First of all, he's called a spiritual rock. Huh? The spiritual rock, our verses say, that rock was Christ. Not just a rock for you to stand your feet on. Not just a rock for you to build your house on, but a rock for you to rest your soul on. A rock for you to depend your eternity on. A spiritual rock and a satisfying rock. Did you hear, you hear how, how St. Paul is talking in our verses about the time when Moses was leading the people out of their slavery in Egypt through the wilderness to the promised land. And sometimes in that desert wilderness, they ran out of water. And what did God tell Moses to do? Take that staff, you know, the one you, you turn the water into blood with and you sent the frogs with and you split the Red Sea with. Take that staff of yours and go and hit that rock. And what happened when he hit the rock? It cracked open and water, fresh, drinkable, beautiful water came rushing, gushing out of that rock like a mighty river enough to, to feed the whole nation and all their livestock animals too. And, and, and Paul says, the rock they really drank from was Christ. It wasn't the, wasn't the granite, it wasn't the mountain boulders that somehow had the power to, to send H2O bubbling forth for all the thirsty Israelites. It was Christ. It was their Savior who never left them, who was always there for them. The Savior who said to the Samaritan woman, I have water that you can drink and never thirst again. Uh, the Savior that said to the crowds there in Capernaum, I am the bread of life. You eat me, you will never be hungry. You drink from me, you will never be thirsty. This satisfying rock. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name because you satisfy our desires with good things. I've come to bring them life to the full, our Savior says. A spiritual rock, a satisfying rock, and, and a stay with you rock. The, the ancient Jewish rabbis, they had a legend that there was this boulder that rolled around wherever Moses went. And it had all these holes in it. And all Moses had to do was hit it with his staff and water came pouring out of it. <laughs> because they said, how did this work? It seemed like every time Moses needed water, there was a water rock there. So that was what they came up with, this boulder rolling around. And, and Paul, he takes that legend and he says, no, there was no rolling around boulder. The reason there was always what they needed when they needed it was because of a different rock. The spiritual rock that accompanied them. Isn't that a line? The spiritual rock that accompanied them, that rock was Christ. Wherever they wandered for those 40 years in the desert, that rock, Christ, would always be there. And how about for, for you? Wherever you wander, however far you go from the path, there's a rock that accompanies you. However you may, may stray, you may be completely lost. Have no idea how to find your way home. But even there, it will be your Savior Jesus. Did you hear what he said in our gospel lesson today? Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. He'll always be there for you. You step on him. Stand on him. Crawl onto him if you need to. A rock that accompanies you. Wherever you may wander, a spiritual rock, a satisfying rock, a, a stay with you rock, and of course a stand on kind of rock. 
Rocky can, can, can uh, stand on and never fall, no matter how hard the winds blow. Huh? The rock's so strong, even the gates of hell cannot overcome it. That, that, that rock, even though all heaven and earth pass away, it will never pass away. A rock for you to stand on it. And finally, a rock that has seen it all. Paul says, back in the time of Moses, who was the rock for God's people? It was Christ. It was Jesus. 1,400 years before he was born, he was the rock of his people. Because his going forth are from of old, not from ancient times. Because when, in the beginning, he was there with God, and he was God. He's always been the rock of his people. And that means he has seen it all. All the times his people have turned their backs on him, he saw it. All the times God's people forgot how good God had been to them and went their own way and then ended up crying bitter tears because of the defeat and the destruction that they brought upon themselves. He was there to see it. So no matter how deep you fall, he has seen it before. No matter how filthy your sins are that need to be forgiven, he has forgiven those same sins a hundred times before. He has seen it all. No matter how you break your promises to him or turn your back on him, he's seen it before. He's seen it before. And he doesn't change. His compassions never fail. What a rock. There's, it's the very best rock. There's no, there's no better one. Remember what Holy Mother Hannah sang when her tears were changed to songs of praise. She sang, there is no other rock. There is no other God like you, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. All other ground is sinking sand. So I wonder what... Um, what you're standing on. I wonder what you rest your soul on. When the temptations come, what do you cling to? When everything seems to be changing, what's your one steadfast, immovable point? Maybe you're just happy to go your own way because you, cause you've already fallen. Maybe, maybe you don't care where your feet are or what your soul rests on because you've already fallen. It isn't too late. It's a beautiful picture. Our faithful God, this unchanging rock, our Savior Jesus, he's going to hold me up no matter how everything falls right. Right? God is our refuge and strength, a never-failing, ever-present help in trouble. Though the earth give way and the waters fall into the heart of the sea, God's there. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. He doesn't change. That's my Savior Jesus. It's a beautiful picture. And yet you might say, Pastor Dirt, it isn't... It's it isn't especially meant to be beautiful here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's meant to be, it's meant to be a, a warning. Because these people, God's people, following Moses through the wilderness, they had that rock. And yet they still fell. That's what our verses say, huh? On the long walk to freedom... Most of the people who walked through the Red Sea, who were saved from slavery in Egypt, didn't make it to the promised land. They stepped off the path. They fell. And what a warning that is. What an example, a tragic example that is. These people, every morning, what do they eat for breakfast and lunch and dinner? Food dropped from heaven onto the ground. When they were thirsty, God provided the water. They had seen the plagues. They had walked through the Red Sea. They had seen the fire on top of Mount Sinai and heard the living voice of God. And whenever they needed to move to a new campsite, this pillar of fire and smoke, 50 stories tall, led them on the way. And yet, 
They forgot it all. And turned their backs on God and were disqualified from entering the promised land. Even Moses himself and Aaron the high priest sinned and fell and were disqualified from entering the promised land. That long walk to freedom, they didn't make it to the end. Even though they had the rock. Mm. Was, did the rock fail? Did the rock shake? Did the rock tumble? No, it wasn't then. I think part of the answer that we want to keep in mind is just because the consequence of their sin was that they couldn't enter the promised land didn't mean that tens of thousands of them didn't still enter heaven. That's how God had to get through to a lot of them, wasn't it? It's more important to me to have you with me for eternity in heaven, so i got to show you how, how serious it is that you don't believe in me, you don't believe in me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you go in the promised land. I'm going to let you wander for 40 years in the desert so I can have you with me forever in heaven. That's part of the answer. And I think a, a, another part of the answer, a beautiful part of the answer, did that rock fail them? No, because their families didn't fall. Their children got to go into the promised land and tear down the walls of Jericho and, and, and live in houses they didn't build and eat from vineyards they didn't plant, right? Their children got to go to the promised land because, because God was faithful. Isn't that a beautiful thing when God lets sinful parents who have screwed up again and again, he lets sinful parents see he's working in their children's lives. He's going to bless them in ways that the parents have forfeited. It's a, it's a beautiful mercy of God when you get to see that. And you think it, it probably happened like this. Many of those parents, they were so humbled, they were so chastised by the consequence of their sin that I got to wander. My whole family has to wander in the desert for 40 years because of my sin, and I will never enter the promised land. Oh, I never want my children to have that. I never want my children to fall like that. And, and, and they're motivated. Didn't they motivate thousands of those parents to make sure their children didn't fall? That was God working. That was the Savior, the rock, working in those families' lives. But all of this, all of this is just pointing to us, our verses. Take, and can you have you think about one more line from our verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 10? Where Paul says, it's in verse 11, he says, all this happened, all this stuff happened to the people of Moses as a warning, as an example for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. The fulfillment of the ages has come unto you. So everything that the, that the Old Testament people of Israel had, you have the fulfillment in Jesus. Everything that Moses ever did for his people, everything any prophet or king in the Old Testament ever did for God's people, you have the fulfillment of it in Jesus because the rock has come down to earth not as a boulder spewing forth rivers of water, but as our Savior, as our Redeemer Jesus. And he brought the kingdom of heaven and he went to the cross to pay for your sins and he, and he rose from the dead Easter morning to conquer death for you and now he sends out his church into all the world full of the Holy Spirit. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. His victory is complete. And now you are God's people on the long walk to freedom. To the freedom of eternal life. Freedom from all pain and grief and funerals and sorrows and disappointments. Freedom, complete freedom, that long walk to freedom, the real freedom, is yours. And there's one rock <laughs> that can keep you from falling off the path. Trust in the Lord forever. The Lord the Lord himself is the rock, the rock eternal. All other ground is sinking sand. I wonder what you're standing on today and what your heart is resting on. And when temptation comes, what you cling to. And when everything seems to be changing, what is your one fixed point? 
isn't too late. That rock was Christ. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand, let's practice speaking about our God. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it printed there in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have some more prayer later on uh, for our new teachers especially. But at this time in the prayer of the church, we have two special prayers. Uh, one is for our brother James Tate. Uh, he's been in the hospital all week and uh, says he should be coming out of intensive care today. And they think that uh, what happened was he had a heart attack. So we'll lift James Tate up in our prayers. And if you don't mind, I'd like to lift up uh, my son Jonas in our prayers today. Uh, Tomorrow night, I got to drive him to O'Hare Airport because he leaves for China for two years uh, to teach English at the university and uh, and do mission work on the side. Uh, so, if you don't mind, let's lift up my son as he goes to the other side of the of the planet. Please join me before the throne of God. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Especially bless our brother, Mr. James Tate, hospitalized for this past week. Hear his prayers for relief from illness after illness, now a heart attack. Bring him out of the intensive care, restore his strength, and let him go back home again. Bless my son Jonas. Give him safe travels. Give him wisdom how to handle himself in a foreign land. And uh, give him an open door for his efforts to tell the people of China who the only rock is, our Savior Jesus. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. O 
Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Hear us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to collect the offering now. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have that insert there on the on the back of it is a tear-off portion. Whatever you are just lifting up in your silent prayers right now, I'd love to have a, a bunch of you write that down on that and tear it off and hand it in so I can include that, whatever it is or whoever it is, in my private prayers this week. There's also some volunteer opportunities uh, coming up on there. You can fill that out and turn that in. If you haven't yet grabbed the Blue Friendship Register in your pew and filled that out with everybody Please do that. Thank you so much. Love to have you help us sing this one. Oh, 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 I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock. Oh, I can feel the water. I can hear the heart. 
I'm Christ the solid rock, I stand all on the ground and sink in sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. I'm Christ the solid rock, I stand all on the ground and sink in sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. Nate and Caitlin, come forward at this time. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to his church, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The Savior loves children. He desires to share all his promises with them. Christian schools provide believers with a unique opportunity to nourish the faith of children that they may walk with Christ throughout their lives. My dear friends, Garden Homes Lutheran School has called you to serve as teachers in the public ministry of the gospel. As servants of Christ, you are to teach all your classes in the light of God's word and lead your students to understand God's holy law and his saving gospel. You are to keep them in your prayers and guide and guard their spiritual growth. You are to set aside your own time for personal study of the scriptures so that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are to strive to be a personal example of what Christian faith looks like, what a Christian life looks like, so that others may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are to work together with the parents of your students so that the witness of law and gospel may be consistent between the home and the school. You're to serve alongside the other called workers in this ministry with love, patience, and respect. And in all your tasks and responsibilities, our Lord Jesus is the one <laughs> equipping you, equipping you with the power of the gospel, of the forgiveness of sins, the gift that makes you really competent 
isn't all your training and your experience and your education, right? It's the power of Jesus through the gospel that makes you competent as a servant of Christ. That's what Paul says. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. In keeping with the word and the will of the Lord, I ask you before God and his people, do you believe that the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired and inerrant word of God and the only source of truth for faith and ministry? Then answer, I do. Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors that they condemn? Then answer, I do. Do you solemnly promise that all your service in its various forms will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran confessions? Then answer, I do. Will you endeavor to live a life that reflects the love that God has for you so that all may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, then answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Are you willing to carry out this work according to the grace that God gives? Then answer, I am, and I ask God to help me. People of garden homes and friends in Christ, you have heard the promises spoken by the teachers that you have called. I encourage you to receive them with joy and remember what the Word of God calls you to do. Work together with them for the benefit of the Lord's kingdom so that your shared service may bring spiritual blessings to the Savior's people. Support them as they teach the young so that they may be brought up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Keep them and their work in your prayers so that their ministry may be blessed and that they may carry out his work with joy. Provide for their physical needs. As the Savior says, the worker deserves his wages. Honor and love them. As St. Peter urges, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Garden Homes, I now ask you in the presence of God, are you willing to receive your teachers as servants of Christ? Will you show them love and honor and support them with your gifts and prayers? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen you to do what you have promised. I install you as teachers at Garden Homes Lutheran School in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord pour out on you his Holy Spirit for the work you have been called to do that you may faithfully carry out all your duties and responsibilities with the word of God as your confidence and guide. We're going to pray for you now. Almighty God, source of all wisdom, we thank you for the opportunity we have to send our children to Lutheran schools. May your life-giving word be the center of all teaching and every activity so that all may come to know and believe your holy law and saving gospel. Equip our new teachers with spiritual wisdom that they may faithfully carry out the duties of their call. Move our students to godly obedience and cause them to grow through their instruction in your word so that they may serve you throughout their lives and finally inherit eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord bless you and make you and your ministry a blessing to others. You can stay right there. You're going to do great. Our gnomes. How about some new teachers, huh? <laughs> Please stand for the close of our service. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Dear Lord, we thank you for teaching us to pray, and we especially thank you for reminding us of that power of prayer. Sometimes the load is heavy, and sometimes that road is long, and sometimes, Lord, this heart of mine is not so very strong. But thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. Father, I do not ask you to take this cup from me. I only ask your guidance or paths I cannot see, and thy will be done, Lord, thy will be done. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine the power, thine the glory for us. feel you near me. I feel your guiding power. I know you are standing by me through every passing hour. And thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. Amen. 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 Thy will be done. Thy will is We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. 
Let's stay standing for our closing hymn. It's in the blue hardcover hymnal, page 510, in Christ alone. Please be seated. So great to be with you today, all of you. Thank you so much. I want to introduce a couple of new people who are going to be helping to serve here at Garden Homes. Uh, first of all, Nathan Ranofsky and his wife, Emily. Uh, go ahead, stand up and introduce them. Nathan is our new uh, senior vicar. He's a senior at the seminary. So he'll be preaching once a month and helping about 15 hours a week to uh, make sure things are getting done on the church side here at Garden Homes. And then Deb, Deb brought her family, her son and her husband. If you want to make them stand, that's up to you, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Deb Schutzler is our new uh, site director at our Lighthouse campus right across the street. We got a bunch of other Lighthouse, uh, Mr. Zastro and uh, Pastor Buskey, some of the leaders at the Lighthouse are also here today. Thank you all for being here. Deb and uh, Nathan, we, we pray and we know God is, is going to be with you and uh, do a lot of blessings through you. So we're so glad you're here. I think uh, most all of our, our teachers uh, are here today. 
from our school. So hope you can get a chance to reintroduce yourself or, or uh, say hi to them. Uh, if you want to uh, set your phone uh, for alarm to go off uh, 7.15 Tuesday morning, uh, because that's when our doors are, are, are going to open and the uh, students are going to be coming in, you can say a prayer for the new school year. So set your phone 7.15 Tuesday morning and, and uh, maybe every day this week, uh, after Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7.15. And just let's uh, shower, cover our whole school with, uh, with our, our prayers as about, uh, what, 270 students will be walking through the doors to learn about Jesus here at Garden Homes. It's a big deal. Thank you to everybody who helped with uh, Mr. Everett Edwards' funeral this past Friday. We've got another funeral coming up, a probably even bigger one. It's a big family. Mr. John Weatherall's funeral will be this Friday, the viewing uh, at 10 and the funeral at 11 here at the Garden Homes. So if you can help with that, just uh, to talk to any of the ladies in the, who are serving the food today, and they'll, uh, they'll get you set up. What else? Hey, we have food and fellowship, ice cream, games, prizes, all the good stuff. Why don't we pray for God's blessings on our food so then whoever's the first one uh, down to the food line, you can go right in and, and grab your meal. Righty? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. Did I miss anything? So don't go out those doors. I know it's a, it's a nice day. It's not too hot out. But take a left and go down the school hallway uh, for the fellowship time. Uh, Caitlin and Nate, if you can get a head start and get to the back so people can, can greet you. And uh, maybe uh, Nathan and Deb, if you don't mind. Uh, heading to the back now, and the uh, people can greet you on their way out. God is good all the time.